You know, I think I'm gonna have to mute the word goose from my social media timelines. I played that untitled Goose game after everyone talked about it like it was the second coming of Billy Mays and really? That is why my timeline is filled with pictures of geese and people talking about geese. I mean it's all right I guess, it's about as fun as the novelty lasts and for me that lasted about five minutes. Now I'm not saying Untitled Goose Game is bad. What I am saying is I don't get it, other people should stop having fun with it, or at the very least they shouldn't let me know they're having fun. I don't want to know that you're having fun, I don't want you to have a good time. Stop it. Stop having a laugh. Stop enjoying yourselves. Stop having fun. Bloody geese infecting my timeline. <laughs> Geese? Goose! Here's a TV that looks like an apple. Nintendo unleashed a Mario Kart Tour onto mobile phones this past week, and what do you know? Just like with most of the company's mobile output, it's a recreation of a beloved Nintendo franchise, except shittier, more frustrating, and monetized to hell and back. Nintendo has been dabbling in what it calls free-to-start games for a while now, insisting on using its own terminology rather than the established name of free-to-play. It does this because it's Nintendo. However, it is perhaps a more honest way to classify freemium experiences since so many of them really are just free to start and demand money to continue playing with any consistency. As a game, Mario Kart Tour is... The carts accelerate themselves and you merely steer by sliding your finger on the screen. It's simple enough, but something always feels slightly off about it. Like steering doesn't feel quite as responsive or intuitive as it should. And you can dig into the menu to find motion controls, but... No. Also, while multiplayer is coming in a future update, it's currently strictly solo, and the game, liar that it is, actively tries to trick you into thinking it's online with bots that have online usernames. It's a limited affair that stymies player progress by demanding they earn grand stars in previous races before unlocking new ones. The mere presence of this had the effect of making me not want to play the game because that shit got old 15 Sonic games ago. But of course what's really been boiling people's piss regarding this game, as it has for a lot of Nintendo's mobile free-to-start efforts, is its monetization. Basically, it's yet another of the grasping little gacha games that Nintendo loves to trot out to a marketplace thoroughly saturated, nay infected, with grasping little gacha games. Now, before we continue, I must offer fair warning. As every good little Nintendo fan will tell you, I personally hate Nintendo with a bit of vendetta that I have because of some reasons. I pretend to despise the objectively perfect Legend of Zelda series to pursue this grudge, which is why I gave Breath of the Wild a 2 out of 10, even though it's really a solid 7. And I once bought 15 copies of Super Mario Odyssey just so I could push all the little cartridges up my bum and then squirt them out to credibly demonstrate that the game is shit. I claim the Switch is my favourite console as a joke, and I commit to this joke by purchasing games on the system constantly to hammer the joke home at my own expense. As such, you can discredit and dismiss everything I have to say regarding the company. And that's fine. I know you already have. Seriously though, I should offer a genuine disclaimer. I once quite notoriously said that it was morally okay to pirate Nintendo's games in response to the company claiming ad revenue falsely on other people's YouTube videos. I realise that what I said was highly offensive to members of the community pouring gasoline on a heated issue without tact or regards to taste. But I want you to know and understand that I only said it because I genuinely believed it and that I was very right to say it. <laughs> Ooh! Real 
talk, Mario Kart Tour is just more lackluster mobile garbage. Like all good free-to-play economies, good. You have your free in-game currency and your premium currency. In this case, coins and rubies respectively. Rubies range from $1.99 for a borderline useless three of them to $69.99 for $135. Rubies are used primarily to tug on a pipe and make things shoot out of the pipe. No, seriously, that's what you do. You pull on your pipe until it squirts pay dirt. I mean, just look at this. Those pipes are literally jerking and splaffing there. What am I supposed to say? What else could I say? I can't be blamed for this. Look at how you run your finger down the shaft to the approving anticipation of a crowd of ecstatic, quivering mushroom heads. Caressing that long green length, oh my yes. And then you, oh. Pull down and pull hard and then hold it. Oh god, hold it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh god, I'm gonna fucking blow. Oh shit, what are you doing to me? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna... <laughs> Did he? Oh cool, I don't have him yet. I can't be blamed for this. All goofs aside, these are loot boxes or loot pipes in Nintendo's case. It's gambling, it's wager-based bullshit that offers characters, carts and aesthetics, and is designed to be regularly frustrating, stuffed as it is with duplicate items and undesirable guff, while the high-end items have a mere 0.3 chance of appearing. Standard loot box bullshit, to be fair, but standard loot box bullshit is disgusting enough. You can also use rubies in coin rush mode to get more of the free currency to spend on some a la carte stuff, and you can spend an $19.99 on the new Yoik set, a bundle of rubies and star tickets that includes the rare and obscure playable character, Mario! From the Mario Kart series! Oh yes, you don't just start out playing as Mario from the Mario Kart series in Mario Kart or the game named after Mario, but Mario from Mario Kart can be yours to play in Mario Kart for the low, low price of 20 bucks! Will somebody just kill video games? Though to be fair, he does have a 1% chance to appear in the loot boxes. So don't get the New York set if you want it just for him. I just don't get it at all. Don't don't spend money on this trash. Also, I mentioned star tickets and I should explain what they are, but I can't be fucking bothered. It doesn't matter. None of these exhausting free-to-play economies fucking matter. As if that wasn't enough, Mario Kart has officially jumped aboard the Battle Pass bandwagon. That thing I said last year was going to be more and more adopted by money-hungry publishers looking for yet another revenue stream. On top of there, dozen other revenue streams. Yes, for a generous $4.99 a month, you too can play a subpar Mario Kart game with added buyer's remorse. Using the Mario Kart Tour Gold Pass, you can get additional challenges, shitty little badges to show off like anybody gives a fuck, and also unlock the 200cc speed setting, which is the only way you can access the thing. While five bucks a month isn't much compared to a lot of Battle Pass type systems out in the world, it's worth bearing in mind that Apple recently launched Apple Arcade, which offers full access to over 50 titles for $4.99 a month, exactly the same price as the Gold Pass. And these aren't just shit muncher games either, these are good. Nintendo could have been making good games for mobile too, but they just don't care to. Super Mario Run, Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, Mario Kart Tour, Dr. Mario Squinting A-Hole, they're all limited and bothersome little affairs that get super boring super quickly. Meanwhile, while Apple Arcade is offering top quality games with varied, complete experiences such as Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is like those bonus stages in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, but faster, more colourful, full of rad music and gay as heck. Then there's The Enchanted World, a unique and clever take on the sliding block puzzle game that I've actually been enjoying, even though it's a sliding block puzzle puzzle game. Even some major publishers are on board. Capcom released Shinsky, an atmospheric and moody little underwater exploration game. There's just tons of top quality stuff on there. It's like the opposite of the direction that the entire mobile market's been going in this past decade. On Android, Google's offering its own subscription service, Google Play Pass, for the same price again as Apple Arcade and Mario Kart Tour's Gold Pass, including such worthy titles as Thimbleweed Park, Knights of the Old Republic, and and, uh, 
Thomas and Friends race on. There's been much debate about the relative merits and staying power of these mobile services, but right here and right now, there is no question of what $4.99 gets you on your cell phone. A ton of complete, intriguing, clever games, or the 200cc option in an awkward Mario Kart spin-off. I can tell you where my money would go, because my money has already gone toward the service that gives me over 50 games and counting thanks. And no, what Nintendo is doing on mobile is not really different from a lot of mobile gacha games, but that's the point, isn't it? Nintendo the innovator, Nintendo the trendsetter, Nintendo the company that's always being different for the sake of being different isn't standing out from the crowd at all. While Apple and Google are making recent strides to return some credibility and dignity to the mobile gaming market, Nintendo is raking it in by doing the same old undignified bullshit everyone else has been doing. While Apple Arcade and Google Play Pass are evolving the mobile platform, Nintendo Nintendo's efforts merely uphold the status quo. Is it Nintendo's job to save mobile gaming? No. Is Nintendo obligated to do something different for the good of the market? Of course not. But it's Nintendo, you know? I kind of expect better of them. By all accounts, the most dynamic and unique use of a Nintendo IP on mobile was Pokemon Go, and all the credit for that belongs to Niantic. One interesting part of this whole discussion is the reported suggestion that Nintendo doesn't quite care about mobile gaming as a platform, instead just seeing it as a way to advertise its properties to a wider audience. According to a Wall Street Journal report, Nintendo is bothered by the idea of being seen as greedy, and adjusts its economies to be less manipulative than other free-to-play structures. Sources claim that because Nintendo sees mobile games as marketing tools rather than strict money-making ventures, their adjustment of rare gacha drops exasperates more experienced mobile developers who believe they could make far more cash if they weren't told to be fairer. While this sounds somewhat positive, it also explains why Nintendo's mobile efforts are not living up to their potential. Why they charge money but they're not even worth the money. Why we don't see full-fledged Animal Crossing or Pokemon games on our phones despite how mind-blowingly successful they could be. Nintendo just doesn't care enough, it's merely all promotion to them and yet it's promotion they're nonetheless making tons of money from, because no matter how much you adjust the odds, in-game gambling is still in-game gambling. You can tell yourself you're being more fair, but you're still fucking with people's heads to frustrate them into spending cash. More to the point, I don't think Nintendo's alleged aversion to greed really squares with Mario Kart Tour's cynical and exploitative design. Mario Kart Tour is pointedly built to sink its mental hooks into people with a loot pipe system that provides rewarding highs broken up by duplicated disappointment. It's got a grinding approach to progression with multiple experience meters and a confusopoly progression system that turned me off the whole thing. Its subscription pass is a joke compared to the recent sub models on either major mobile platform and above all, it's just a pretty shitty Mario Kart game. I will merrily admit my patience and benefit of the doubt for microtransactions has been worn to nearly zero for even free-to-play games these days. The saturation has gotten too much. I'm genuinely sick of the fucking sight of them in both paid and freemium titles now. I've seen too far behind the curtain. I've spoken to too many targets whose psychological vulnerabilities have been exploited by insidious micro models and I felt my own mental strings being tugged on by these games one too many fucking times. Even playing Mario Kart Tour with no intention of spending money on it or investing in it in any way, I felt my patience being chipped away at and the temptation to drop a few bucks brewing. As resentful as even I am regarding microtransactions, I still feel that pull because I've always been in the target demo for these things. I've no patience for wasted time, I've got an addictive personality and I'm far too financially impulsive. I've said it before and I'll say it again, were it not for my job, my overexposure to the CD side of the games industry and my resistance to sleazy tactics as a result, I'd be the perfect whale. And I don't mean whale as in fat. <laughs> fat joker. <laughs> Fucking hell. I love eating pies. So Nintendo doesn't have my respect here, nor the benefit of my doubt. I'm tired of economies that are, by their very design, tiresome. And fuck me, I just started in on that Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which itself has multiple currencies, individual purchases, a goddamn roadmap of bullshit, and a fucking battle pass. But that's another video. 
for another day. Another one. Another one. Lord, I am tired. King Worm, your honour, the crown will plainly show the prisoner that now stands before you was caught red-handed showing feelings. Showing feelings of an almost human nature. This will not do. Look, I'm just saying we should all do our own version of the wall. We can't all have the worst one. I think that the thrusting argument of today's video is that Nintendo is trash and will always be trash and should stop being trash. And I'm not at all trying to troll the overzealous Nintendo fans that take umbrage with me whenever I criticise Nintendo. I don't lean into that. I don't do it on purpose to aggravate them. But Nintendo is the worst video game company in the world. They're worse than three Konamis duct taped together. And that's been proven. There are laboratory tests, there are petri dishes with the results inside, and scientists around the world agree that Nintendo is bad, and The Legend of Zelda has never had a good game in the series except for Hyrule Warriors, which was specifically good because Nintendo didn't make it. When Nintendo makes games, they're bad. Animal Crossing? Bad. Super Mario Odyssey? Bad. Those are the only ones I remember. They're all bad. Wario World 6, the treasure of the coins that were there, that's also bad. It's a bad game. It's... Uh, fucking... Uh, thank God for me!